I'm Karen Swizek, and you're listening to the Bacon Bits and Bites podcast. This is the podcast where a bit of business and a bite of technology come together. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bacon Bits and Bites podcast. Today with me, I have Shauna K. Jones, the founder of Modify. Modify aims to connect the right people to the right opportunities, including mentorship, jobs, scholar, and scholarships. This is done by helping students create personalized networks with both their schools and potential employers they are interested in while supporting their journey to success. Welcome to the show, Shauna. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being on to the show. So I'm curious to know the name itself, Modify, how did you come up with that? Well, uh, during my journey, it was kind of what should the name be and, you know, going back and forth with the great team I had and what we decided to do was what were we trying to do? We were trying to motivate students in any way we can and making sure that by not only motivating them, but simplifying the world around them. Um, was something we wanted to do. So we said, let's use the words motivate and simplify. And that's how we came up with modify. Oh, I love it. Wouldn't it be cool (laughs) how if um, modify ended up being like a verb that people would use in reference to uh, your company? I can't pretend that that wasn't a little bit of incentive as well. (laughs) (laughs) You got to modify that. (laughs) Exactly. Go into a coffee shop and hear people using it. I I can't pretend that a little of that was a part of that decision. Yeah. So the start of this company, um, it has some, there's a personal story to it. Do you mind sharing the journey? Absolutely. So I, when I developed this company, I was in my last year of school and trying to figure out what my final project was going to be. And at the same time, I have a younger brother. At the time, I was helping him choose schools and decide where he's going to go in his career. And I remember when choosing schools for me was, I want to make sure I'm close enough to home so that I don't have to do my own laundry. Uh, but, (laughs) But my brother is on the autism spectrum, and I just recognized that so much more care had to go into that decision around not only is it the right program for him, how large are the class sizes, will he have the supports he needs. Uh, and that's really that's what started this journey of Modify is how can I help support, you know, people like my brother who, you know, the answers may not come simply. How do we use data? How do we use technology to do that? And then how do we build a technology that is flexible enough to support them at different stages. So those are really what inspired us to do this. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you mentioned that you were looking for places that were close to home so that you didn't have to laundry. For me, it was actually the opposite. I was looking at places like the further, the better. (laughs) I was okay with the idea of doing uh, my own laundry. (laughs) Oh, no, I wanted it just enough, just enough where it wasn't surprise visits, but enough where I want some home cooked food or I need to do laundry. I could get on a bus. So (laughs) that was what made the decision for me yeah so uh, just a little background too on how i found out about shauna and modify um i'm also an instructor part-time at sheridan college and i had found out about uh, sheridan edge's pitch competition called amplifun and i thought this concept was really cool in that um attendees were given this amount of play money so you would go around um you had a chance to talk to all the different startups and then you can decide which um, or how much of the money you wanted to invest in. So yes, I did actually invest quite a bit of money in <laughs> your your startup because just because I thought the concept was really interesting. And um, and I recall like so clearly like my first year of university, how much I struggled with trying to juggle a heavy workload, being away from home for the first time, and and trying to make friends. I wish this was something that had existed when I was in university. No, and I appreciate you throwing money, (laughs) (laughs) fake money as it may, um, to to this venture. Because the more we spoke to, you know, other students and understood their journey and, you know, really making sure that whatever we were building captured things that not only you and I struggled, but students 
today struggle with. So it means a lot to hear that it really does. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, and just it's funny, because before we started recording this episode, I had mentioned to Shauna that I, I do a lot of research or slashes like to say strategic stalking. So looking at uh, people's Instagram and LinkedIn profile. So you really should put things on or put out the things that you're doing on your social media because people will look at it and um, it can help create great conversation. So actually, yeah, speaking of Instagram, I know that you were an exhibitor at the Collision Conference. And then not only that, you took the stage at um, the same company who does those conferences, the Rise Conference in Hong Kong. So it's like, what was that like? Were you nervous at all? Oh, I was sweating bullets. I was pretending like I wasn't, but <laughs> it was extremely nerve wracking. Um, what was cool was somebody had heard about the work we were doing and recommended us for the RISE competition in Hong Kong. And it was just really interesting to get that opportunity to go there and to really talk about what we, what we do and why it's important. Um, and just to see the different context that education is on the other side of the world where so many things are different, but yet so many things are the same in terms of problem, solution, and how we can really push forward. But being on that stage in front of that crowd was both exhilarating and, and nerve wracking. But I would never have traded that experience because the people we met, uh, the connections we made are invaluable. And then through those connections, we heard that they were coming to Toronto. And I had my hand up first and foremost to say we need to, to be there. And I definitely feel like Collision, Rise, they, they really put a platform for you to not only show yourself to potential investors and customers, but to other companies in your space and in different spaces where you can really create a strong ecosystem to move forward. Mm -hmm. So being the founder and director, you're expected to um, be on center stage for, for the most part. I'm just, I'm just curious, you know, is it something that you can get less nervous over time just because you know do it more or it's like each and every time it's still like oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> each and every time before I go on a stage I go what have I done how did I get myself <laughs> into this situation I was like I went into tech for a reason I thought I was going to be behind a computer screen shielded from the world and I went I ended up now speaking more than if I'd gone into you know probably public speaking uh, so it honestly does not get less nerve nerve wracking what I think gets clearer though is your message and um, the passion about why you do it and, and why it's important uh, that is definitely something that I had to learn and figuring out how to be quick on your feet was another thing that it, it never gets old because you know things go wrong and learning how to deal with that over doing it over you know a period of time has really really helped but so oh, it gets, it doesn't get less nerve wracking, but you become more at ease with difficult situations because of it. Mm -hmm. As a kid, were you always interested in the areas of STEM, science, uh, technology, engineering, and, and math? Or was it something that, you know, you didn't feel you had a passion for until later on in life? So to be honest, for a long time, I thought uh, business was going to be my my area. Uh, technology was something where as a kid, I would just break things <laughs> and <laughs> fix them. Um, but I never truly saw that as something that I could use a career for. Even when I was in university, uh, just to make ends meet, I was fixing computers, I was building small websites. But for me, it was just, I figured out how to do it through tinkering and trial and error and teaching myself. And I thought it was just something to get me through difficult money situations, but I didn't, I never thought it was going to be something I do full time. And when it came to that difficult decision of where I want my path to lead and where do I find my passion lies and sitting down really thinking about it, I, I realized tech was my heart and soul. So it didn't come to me at the very beginning, but I think there was always signs. And as I grew older, it became clear that this is what I wanted to do. Oh, awesome. So I just want to circle back to um, modify the the venture itself. So um, it helps solve the problems having to do with students who are struggling, a uh, gap between goals and performance, student retention, unused resources, and lack of insights towards student engagement. Um, do you feel that, you know, given the fact that the students nowadays, they're really immersed in technology, has 
have the problems remained the same? Um, have they changed at all as to what students are struggling with? Do you feel like they're struggling um, with additional issues today? Uh, it's it's interesting you say that. I think it's not only many of the issues I struggled with when I was in school. I think there is an added complexity of technology, and that that's weird coming from the girl who's selling the technology too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, beware of the thing I'm selling. But um, what I mean by that is, tech has become such an integral part of what we do. It's made so many things around school much simpler around how we take notes, how we learn, how we're able to really communicate with each other. But one of the big things like through this process and kind of learning something that I don't think we struggled with as much when we were growing up is direct interaction is, is one of probably the, the biggest things that I found now <clears throat> is something where it's not as natural as a skill as it was for, for when I was in school because we're so glued to the screen, then communicating in a way that's not one-to-one -one communication in person. <clears throat> so figuring out not only to build tools and build tools that people use, but building tools around how do we not only put them in front of more screens, but in front of each other. How do we communicate? Because where we're seeing that getting is really hitting people hard is when they're transitioning out of school into the workforce right where mm -hmm. you now have to communicate across business lines and even if you're the most tech of tech person there's likelihood that you're at some point you're going to have to communicate with with other areas of the business so that is something i find is is a relevantly newer issue and it just comes to how do we find creative ways to support all this great technology we're doing, but also encourage others that, you know, sometimes it's good to talk to somebody in person, put the phone down. So that's been something I've found. Mm -hmm. It's funny that you mentioned the phone because I feel nowadays the only people yeah. I talk uh, to on the phone are my sister uh, and my parents. Pretty much everyone else all communicate via email or social media messaging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's how we communicate. That's now how we speak. That's, um, it's, it's so ingrained in our essence, right? So it's how do we not see it as something that is negative, but use it in a positive way. But remember that in person is also quite important. Mm -hmm, definitely. So uh, one of the things that I'd also like to talk about is uh, the issue of only starting to build a professional network after graduation. Um, and I can totally relate to this because to be honest, when I was in university and even during my last couple of years, networking didn't even really cross my mind. I, I had always associated networking with something, oh, it's when I have a job, when I'm professional in the working world but when you think about it networking you know in your younger years in your university or college years it makes so much more sense because you're being proactive and it'll increase like the opportunities increase the amount of connections for when you graduate exactly yeah I've as somebody who has been um, who has learned through you know gone through where I hadn't networked in school and then started to learn to professionally network I saw the huge differences right, where um, when I wasn't professionally networking, it was difficult for me to go, I'm having a problem. What are the other career choices out there? What is out there, right? But as soon as I started to professionally network, I started to figure out, is this the right career path for me? What are options where I can do tech and still be with people? So I got to really get viewpoints and vantage points into things that would never have occurred to me without a professional network. So a big reason why that's a part of what we're building is that we recognize that, yes, success in school is amazing and we wanna provide tools to support that, but we also have to start to encourage how can we start building the foundations of connectivity through mentorship, um, through events, just figuring out not only, yes, this is the path I want, but what is it truly like? to work in this area or you know what I'm not sure I'm not certain great we'll we'll help you connect with people who are on a different path um, and I think it's so ingrained in the success of you and the potential that you can get that you're doing those elements 
while you're in school, while you're still learning, while you're still developing. Mm -hmm. So as the CEO, not only, you know, having to do being in front of the crowd, um, you're also responsible for building a team and then leading a team. So what has that experience been like? And what advice would you give to people who are looking to build their own team? (laughs) Uh, yeah again it's 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 a very interesting thing I (laughs) I would never say it was something that came natural to say how am I gonna figure out the right people for the right things (laughs) I'm gonna I'm gonna be in charge of people I can't even be in charge of myself Uh, but one of the things that became very apparent to me was what what is a foundational aspect of making a good team and heart was a big piece of that. So what I started before I had a team, I just started to network with people and just letting them know what the heart and soul of what I'm building is going to be. And with just that element, I was just bombarded with amazing people who said, I want to help. And I think that is such a key element in, in building a good team is that it's not only I can be as passionate as I want, but finding people who also not see the passion, see the drive, and want to be a part of it is so instrumental. The next thing was I know very well a few things that I'm good at. <laughs> Most <laughs> not. <laughs> so finding people who not only agree to everything I said, because there's many things I say that are terrible, <laughs> um, <laughs> but look at the world and look at problems in a different view than I do and bring different skill sets. So that was, I found one of the big things I did early was I wrote down the things I knew I was good at and the Mm -hmm. things I struggled with. That list of struggle was much longer (laughs) than the things (laughs) I was good at. Um, And sometimes that list can be quite depressing when you start. But the great thing that comes from that is you get to really highlight what things am I missing the most? And I need to find people to help me meet those things that I need. And that's really the foundations how I built the teams. I got to, and for me, building a team is almost like dating in many ways, right? Where at the beginning, you're saying all the right things and (laughs) it sounds great, but it's really about let's work on this day in, day out. Do we fit? Do we not? And then how do we work through when we disagree and when we don't? And when we agree, how do we move it forward? So those were really key to to me being able to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess you could say, you know, like telling people, because you said building a business is like dating. And then I guess you're searching people who you can intensely, I guess, like be married to or have like a long term serious relationship with. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) So so you have to look at it. Choose your business partner like you would be. (laughs) Think about having to deal with somebody. And that's what I tell people all the time. You have to remember the person that you deal with in business, you're going to see them as much or more (laughs) than your own family. Mm -hmm. Right. So you want to like them as much as you like your family. Right. So that's a key, key element in, in making those calls. Okay, so talking about motivation, uh, you know that, you know, starting your own business, running your own business, uh, just trying to keep going, it can be really tough, whether you're by yourself or you're with a team, like what motivates you to keep moving forward on your journey? And how like, do you find it easier more to motivate yourself or easier to motivate your team? (laughs) I I find it easier to, well, it's, it's a combination of a few things. I feel the passion that a lot of times when I feel low or it's really difficult to push me forward, I I usually go back to the same question, why am I doing this? And then my second question is, is the job done, right? Why am I doing this? I want to make an impact um, for students and especially students like my brother. I want to ensure that they have the tools to equip them to not only be successful while they're in school, Um, but to really support their transition and support the building of what they need in terms of skill sets and people um, to move on to the next stage. And is that work done? Absolutely not. So that's always something that really gets me back motivated and and really looking at it. Um, Around my team, it's 
it's really about, I think it starts a lot with you, what you put out to the world, right? So when, when I'm down, you know, that mood <laughs> can really fester among everybody. Mm -hmm. So making sure that I am putting in that work and I'm putting in that commitment and I'm putting in that drive, that usually really helps to bring the team together to do the same. And, and, and identifying why your team is, is struggling to stay motivated is also key, right? We, we have our good days and bad. And, and really taking the time to say, you know what, this might be burnout take a few days, come back, and let's, and let's talk about it. And, and being aware that you have to think about your personal health as well as your team's health and figuring out how we can keep each, each other motivated and, and really push forward. But, yeah, it's, it's a lot of it's, – it's difficult when you're working lots of hours and you're working. But those brief moments when somebody comes up to you and says, this is helping me for this or – this is going to really support me in this, that really is um, a great motivator. Mm -hmm. It's crazy how the term entrepreneur burnout is so real because we think, well, I can do this. I, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I can do anything and like I can do everything. But I think it's, it's really one of those things more. You can do anything, but you can't do everything. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. And, and sometimes I think we as entrepreneurs are afraid to talk about it, right? We, it's not a popular thing to talk about the things that are difficult. We talk about the things that are, you know, went well and, and the times it, it, it's going well. But I believe in talking about, yes, it is a, it's very hard and, and you're creating something out of nothing and you're going to have those days, but it's, yeah, you should feel comfortable expressing that and, and working with others to see how to move forward. But it's a real thing. Absolutely. It's funny because like, as we're talking about this in conversation, I'm already like having a light bulb, you know, light up in my head. And like, if you ever were to consider, you know, having a version of this for, for entrepreneurs, because there is such thing of, you know, um, needing to be aware of, are you taking care of yourself as an entrepreneur? Like, how are you feeling right now? <laughs> Don't tell people of where we're going next. <laughs> <laughs> like telling no, the future. No, I, I completely agree. I, I don't think the job ends through, you know, connectivity. I, I think the job is we learn as we're in school, what works, what doesn't. We change, we grow. How do we identify signs of, you know, burnout? How do we develop strategies? How do you communicate with others about how you're feeling and, and what you're going through? How do you get support from people who have been there? So I completely agree. <laughs> Sheridan has been and continues to be one of the greatest supports I've ever had <clears throat> while I was in school. I never felt as just a student, um, they've opened doors and pathways like no other. And just developing relationships with people like our amazing president, uh, Janet, and just powerhouses like Renee from The Edge and, you know, our great co-op department that all I can say about Sharon is they've been a great support in many ways. And I'm very I'm very, very proud to be a part of the Sheridan family. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, just talking about like EDGE, uh, for those of you who don't know, the acronym itself is also pretty cool. It stands for Entrepreneurship Discovery and Growth Engine. Like when I read that, I was like, oh, that sounds so cool. Yes. <clears throat> yes. I remember I was actually there when they were trying to come up with the name. And it was, I won't pretend, it was a whole thing. It was like, we want to make sure that this name fits what we're trying to do and, and try to work at. And they were, the one thing with the edge from the very beginning, they've been so passionate about it and everything they live and breathe is about that, right? So I, I'm so happy and, and it just makes me feel so proud to be a part of edge and all they do. And the, I like to call them, you know, they're, they're like the rising star within the incubator community because they really are about us, the startups, and, and figuring out how to support us to success. 
Mm -hmm. One of your LinkedIn articles um, mentioned that you met the CEO of Apple, uh, Tim Cook. Was that through Sheridan as well? (laughs) Yes, that was a whole thing, actually. So they, um, I got like a brief email saying, hey, are you free Tuesday? And I go, yeah, I I can be free. (laughs) Sheridan asked. So uh, I was like, yeah. And they're like, yeah, you may be meeting somebody so just be there. <laughs> and I go, should I prepare? And they're like, yeah, bring, bring your, your tool and, you know, make sure you, you have a presence. And they're like, oh, try to be there on time. Didn't and, give all, me- and they didn't tell you anything about like, nothing else, nothing else. The first sign that I, I was sweating for is when I got into a room, it was a few of us, everybody else had a Mac <laughs> and I had a <laughs> Windows laptop. <laughs> And I went, oh no, I didn't get the, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> and then he walks in, and then I really went, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what was really cool was it wasn't just, oh yeah, I got to meet him and it was awesome. I got to really talk to him about the work they're doing, the work we're doing, and and how to best support this student ecosystem, how to ensure that we're, we're working on tools and products that support any student um, and being able to be flexible enough to work um, throughout their life as a student. And what was really exciting was he took that time and we got to really um, work through things that they were doing and things that we were doing. And it was an amazing once in a lifetime experience. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I, I can imagine. So we're, we're launching, um, we're launching two pilots because, you know, we don't like sleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're launching, launching our student success uh, pilots really about how do we support you while you're in school, you're at risk uh, because you're not meeting or exceeding these, these grade limits. What are the things you need to start doing? One of the big reasons we wanted to do it was grades is, one element of success while you're in school, right? We, we want to get an idea of how you're feeling. We want to understand what are the challenges. We want to give you suggestions on how to improve those grades, how to get help if you are not feeling up to going to classes and this is not working for you. So really figuring out early alerts and prompts to, to support that. Um, for Modify Network, we're taking a very different approach, I like to say. With Modify Network, our whole thing is we're calling it Modify Network because we want to connect you and connect the right people to opportunities. We, we think about network and we're thinking about we're looking for a job, and that's not what this is about. This is mm-hmm. about let's understand who you are, what's passion, what you're passionate about, what you're interested in, and let's find ways to connect you to potential um, mentors. and and companies and and we do that through our data and we do that through really getting a sense of who you are and and our goal is why don't we have the community help us build that so we're bringing just the bare bones and then working with a group of pilot students pilot mentors pilot companies and they're going to tell us what they love what they don't and that's how we're going to do it. it's going to be super interactive And it's all about building what we want, the community we want to build. So so that's how we're going to be launching Modify Network as well. Mm -hmm. For uh, one of the big reasons is we want as diverse a pool of, Mm -hmm. of people as possible. Because one of the things we have to remember about technology is we want to ensure that we're not just building for what we think and what we like. So mm-hmm. I'm a very big believer in a diverse profile set of what we're building and ensuring that we're looking at as many different metrics, we're looking at as many different scenarios as possible. So, so having a diverse pool uh, will definitely help that. So bring them all. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Uh, for all those listening out there, if you're interested, we, there's a couple of pilots. So it's the it's the student success pilot and the modify network pilot. Um, just talking about the diverse pool, do you think um, it's something that sometimes entrepreneurs, uh, when they're building their their apps and their tools, do you think it's something that they um, may overlook? Yes, absolutely. Because 
I like to say we know what we know and right. we sometimes don't know what we don't know. <laughs> uh, so we sometimes as entrepreneurs go, we have the solution to this major problem and that's the best solution of all time. <laughs> uh, and, and that's kind of sometimes the thought we go in and we build with that thought and we build with what we understand. And that to me is the wrong way to do it, right? We may have an idea of this is a problem and it goes, let's research to truly determine if this is a problem. If the answer is yes, we may have an idea of the solution, but again, we should be researching, we should be talking to the people who uh, are gonna use this, we should be talking to the people who are impacted to ensure that that solution is comprehensive. And we have to ensure that not only from a functionality, but how are people going to use it? What devices are they going to be using it on? We, we Making those assumptions without data, without support of people to really test the back, it, it can be a very dangerous thing. Mm-hmm. So uh, before we sign off, I want to ask you, what is one thing you wish you had known or wish you had done when you first started on your journey? <laughs> so where, just, where, to, where to start <laughs> all the things uh, I think the biggest one was exactly what we're, we're talking about with network I, I wished I had a professional network of entrepreneurs before I went on this journey because there were so many things just from the baseline I didn't know or understand or had to take months sometimes to figure out which could have been a simple conversation with, with people who had done it before. Uh, so really understanding and developing that while I was a student is probably one of the biggest regrets I had because there's so many things now that if I was equipped with that while I was a student would have made this transition so much easier. Uh, so that to me is, is one of the big ones is that networking, especially that professional networking. Uh, it's so huge. Mm-hmm. It's like they say your network is your net worth. Exactly. It, it, it's 100% true. And that's regardless of if you're an entrepreneur, if you're working in whatever field or sector, your network is your capital. That is truly what's important uh, because that can determine a lot, success or no success. And um, really having that as early as possible, I think, is a huge part and a huge key to it. Mm -hmm. So if people wanted to get in touch with you or if they wanted to sign up for either of your pilots, where can they reach you? Yeah, so we are on, you know, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm sure we probably have a carrier pigeon somewhere. Um, (laughs) But, Harry Potter. <laughs> absolutely. Um, all through at Modify Learn. Uh, you can get us through there. Through our website uh, at www.modify.ca. Uh, you can sign up for all our pilots. You can reach out to us. All the things you need is there. And we would love, love, love to hear from you. Whether it's to sign up for our pilots to give us information about what you think uh, we should be doing, what things you'd be interested in. Uh, We just love to hear from people and it's all about learning and growing and we want to do this together. So please, please reach out. Amazing. Thanks again for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really excited to be a part of this. I've heard from a few people about your show and oh really I, wow and I'm, I, I'm so I, new <laughs> and I fangirled a little bit and um yeah so thank you so much for having me I really appreciate it oh you're welcome and thank you all to our listeners for tuning in stay tuned for more episodes and ciao for now thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the bacon bits and bites podcast If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe, leave a review on iTunes, and share this podcast with your family and friends. You can follow the podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Bacon Bits and Bites. And on Twitter, it's Bacon Bits underscore Bites. Ciao for now.